You know, I actually first saw the Minix Elite EU715 AI Mini PC for the first time back at Computex 2024. And now, almost a full year later, here it is. Just goes to show how long it can take to get these products out to market. So what does the Elite bring to the table? Well, it looks premium thanks to its metal case and is a surprisingly heavy mini PC, which adds to the solid feel. The Elite is powered by USB-C instead of a barrel jack connector and the port selection has some other differences to the norm. You might have already guessed by the sticker on it that it's packing Intel's Core Ultra 7 155H. This CPU has a max of 16 cores with 22 threads and Intel Arc integrated graphics. The Elite comes with a USB-C power supply which supports multiple voltages, but going by the maximum 100 wattage of the power supply, it's running at 20 volts. Apart from the user guide, there's a VESA mount with screws and HDMI cable. Minix includes a specific USB-C port for powering the Mini on the rear right side. This replaces a commonly used barrel jack and works the same way. Unfortunately, it can't be used for data or display. Next to it is a USB-C 20 gigabit data port only. For wired networking, there's dual Realtek 2.5 gigabit LAN, display outputs, which are HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4, both supporting at least 4K 120Hz. On the front is a Thunderbolt 4 port supporting 4K 120Hz, and I was able to power the mini and get display at the same time with my USB-C monitor for that magical single cable solution. The last two USB 3 Type A's are 10 gigabit, and there's a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Minix has also included an integrated microphone, which is what the two holes are for. Inside it is an Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 to handle wireless and Bluetooth. The Elite Mini isn't available yet for order on the official website, but on Amazon.com it's $860 US dollars after the coupon for the 32GB RAM 1TB SSD model. US tariffs on Chinese products are now in effect, and this might be the first one we're looking at affected by them. Won't know for sure until we see it available elsewhere. In any case, prices are only going to shoot up in the US once local stock dries up, or for upcoming new products. The Elite is a breeze to open. Screws are adjacent to the rubber feet for easy removal. Pull on the handy rubber, and you're in. For storage, there are two M.2 2280 PCIe Gen 4X 4 slots. Unfortunately, no additional cooling for the SSDs. Two sticks of crucial DDR5 5600 sodium are included, and the M.2 wireless card is easily accessible. Windows 11 Pro is pre-installed on the Elite. No malware or rootkits were found after a scan. We've had a good run with Linux compatibility lately, and the Elite Mini didn't have any issues when testing off the USB drive. Okay then, let's see how the Minix Elite EU715 AI holds up against a bunch of other options. With Media Lake CPUs, Intel lost the single core crown. And this Ultra 7 is slightly below the other one tested. It matches the Intel flagships from the previous generation. In multicore, the Elite Mini beats the other Ultra 7 result out of the box. However, it only has one power limit option, and the GTI 14 Ultra outperforms it by 5% when enabled. So it's actually closer to the Ultra 5. Geekbench single core mimics the Cinebench results. There's a bunch of minis outperforming it. In multicore, the GTI 14 Ultra took the win with its default power mode by a very small margin, and is up 6% with its power limit increased. In video encoding, the Mini has a similar result to the Ultra 5, if a bit behind. Switching to AV1 video encoding, the GTI 14 Ultra 7 is far ahead with this longer test. If we switch to AV1 hardware encoding and offload the work to the iGPU, the Minix is one of the lower performers, with a couple of Ultra 5s and 7s coming out ahead. As you might have guessed by the model name, Minix is pushing AI with this Mini PC and the 155H inside has similar AI CPU performance to the 13900HK. GPU AI performance is all over the place, only beating the Ryzen 6600H in half precision. It's not just AI though, the Elite Mini has lower than expected integrated graphics results. In 3D Mark Firestrike DX11, it's only hitting the 6000s, while the GTI 14 Ultra hit almost 9000, a 40% increase. The TimeSpy DX12 results sees an improvement, but it's still behind the other Ultra Minis and the GTI 14 is up by almost 
33%. Finally, the DX12 Steel Nomad Lite result follows the same trend and is 34% lower than the GTI 14 Mini PC. An audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background failed with high DPC execution time. I'd put this one down to CPU thermal throttling. Video editing is still an area Intel has AMD beat with its superior media decoder and that's a good usage case for this mini PC. Since there are older and weaker Intel CPUs that handle 4K video editing fine, it's no surprise that this one does as well. Game wise, all the esports games tested play pretty well at 1080p. Triple A games on the other hand don't do too well, especially with a lower GP performance. You'll need to use FSR or XESS subscaling to hit 30fps in Baldur's Gate 3, or get a more stable 30fps in Cyberpunk 2077. There's not enough GPU power for GTA Enhanced with ray tracing, but it runs above 30fps using high settings. God of War Ragnarok is also below 30 FPS. Testing the newly released real-time strategy game Tempest Rising and it's still below 30 FPS during battles. This mini is okay for emulation with the Wii U game library playing fine at 1080p. With PS3, some tougher to emulate titles like Killzone 2 fall below their target frame rate, but a lot of games will play fine at 1080p. Thanks to the Thunderbolt 4 port on the front, you can connect an eGPU for a big boost in graphics performance and Elite worked fine tested with an RTX 4070 Super. 3D Mark Storage Benchmark placed the included Kingston Gen 4 drive down the list in speediness. Since there's no cooling, SSD temp is higher than normal, hitting almost 70C. With extended use and higher ambient temps, you might see thermal throttling on the drive. Bluetooth range isn't great at 3.5 meters or 11 feet, but wireless range was okay when playing Valorant using the 5G band at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router. No connection issues were reported. The Elite uses little power at idle, just 8 watts from the wall, which is great. The maximum power draw only hit 84 watts, which isn't much for an Ultra 7 CPU. This Meteor Lake chip can charge a lot more for a better performance, as you can see with the GTI 14. This is the main reason we saw the iGPU performance behind. CPU temperature reached a maximum of 94C, which is higher than many minis on the list, but if we add the performance mode numbers, it does a little bit better. Still, it does thermal throttle when pushed. Load fan noise is on the high side, with only one mini being louder in its default power limit. If we add the higher power limits of the mini PCs that support it, there are only five others that are noisier. This mini doesn't take up much space and is definitely smaller than the GTI 14 Ultra. The key you need to mash on startup to get into the BIOS is delete. Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of settings here. You can't change the fan curve or the power limit. In power settings, you've got the power loss options and wake on LAN. That's it really. So with all that out of the way, we come to the pros and cons. The Minix Elite features a nice metal case. It's powered by USB-C, making it easy to find a replacement power supply if needed. It's also easy to open. However, performance, especially iGPU performance, is lower than an Ultra 7 can handle due to the lower power limit. There's no cooling on the SSDs, load fan noise is high, as is the price. In the US at least. So, that's the Minix Elite EU715 AI. As it is currently, the price needs to come down to make it more competitive and the rest has been covered already. 
Minix has a variety of mini PCs, and if you're looking for their smallest option, do check out my review of the Neo Z97 right here. Cheers.